What's going on everyone, CJ back here with a brand new and hopefully ultra exciting new series. This is my main dynasty series here on EA Sports College Football 25. Yes, that is right. Streamed last night, the game, that seems pretty good. You know, there's some positives, there's some negatives, just like any EA Sports game. I had a great time, although I was getting cooked on stream last night, so if you didn't get a chance to watch that Thank you. Saves me a little bit of embarrassment, but going to get into who obviously we're going to be using in this Dynasty series here in just a moment. But just kind of go through the basic settings that I have set up here. We're going to we're going to go all American. I was playing on stream varsity last night and I was getting cooked. So not setting my expectations too, too high, but we are going to start off on all American. Going to go eight minute quarter length with the accelerated clock set to 25 We'll see how that goes. You know, I may make some changes. I'm trying to be cognizant of the video length here in these episodes. Always try to keep them under an hour. They don't always work like that, but that's the goal anyways. So we'll see how that goes. And then obviously, full control with the season experience. So we have full control over the recruiting, everything that goes along with it. So it should be a good time. And I'm sure, I guess you already knew by the thumbnail, which I'm sure will have something to do with this team on it. But hold on to your freaking britches, man. This is going to be a tough, tough dynasty. Going with my hometown team. That is right here in Akron, Ohio. The Akron Zips. I actually went there to that school, to Akron University, for a couple semesters. Wait, this was a, a little ways back in the day, right? I'm, I'm a little older than some may think. But I went there for a couple semesters and actually dropped out because Ooh. I thought I was going to be a rapper. Fun fact. But if you don't know about Akron University... Not a football school. <laughs> Not a good one, anyways. Um, only three winning seasons for Akron U in the past decade. Only uh, three bowl games they've appeared in with a 1-2 and two record and only one conference championship in the MAC. That was back in 2005. Only a one-and-a-half uh, rated school over there, you see, with the Stars. So this one is definitely going to be probably the most challenging series that I've done so far on this channel. But that is where we come in. And that is right, we have the St. Louis Sentinels running back Dudley Saxton as our coach. If you watch that series, my Madden 24 main franchise series, you know all about Dudley. And what happened here in this Madden universe or Madden slash college football universe, Dudley Saxton suffered a season ending injury on the St. Louis Sentinels. He was a little bit down on his luck. He was a little bit depressed. You know, he was such a good running back on that series. So Coach Smalls of the Sentinels, obviously me, being from Akron, Ohio, having those Akron ties. We talked to some people, made some phone calls, and we got my man Dudley Saxton into the coaching room with the promise that he would return this org or I shouldn't say return this organization to greatness, elevate it to greatness for the first time ever. And you can see Dudley, man, he kind of let himself go a little bit there. He's not uh, clean cut like he once was. But I think my man Dudley Saxton is ready for the job. And there you see it right there. The past history records of Akron University, not good, man. They had a couple seasons only winning one game. Here's where uh, they had their first bowl, the famous Idaho, Idaho Potato Bowl. And I mean, look at that, even an 0-12 season. And most recently, two wins in the past three seasons. So luckily, with Dudley here, goal is just to win four games. So we're going to go ahead and ink that contract. And first thing we're going to get into is the lifeblood of any dynasty and the lifeblood of any college football program. That will be the recruiting. I guess we'll take a look at the roster if you want to call it that. I'm not sure, uh, you know, if a roster is the best word for this. I would, I would just choose dumpster fire. Really would probably be more appropriate. But we got our quarterback, Ben Finley, and also Taj Bullock. I would say, you know, it could be either one of these guys playing for us this year. We'll start with Finley. But if he's not playing well, not doing a good job, it could easily, we could easily switch to Taj. Running backs, I mean, we're going to have to definitely look to the ahead to the future. We got uh, our sophomore here, Charles Kellum, but then a couple seniors behind him. So they'll be moving on next season as well. Wide receivers, probably our best player. It, one of, if not the best players on this team is Alex Adams from uh, Oiska, Mississippi. But he's a senior too. So he will be gone after one season and it's not looking, you know, too pretty behind him. So I think wide receiver will probably be one of the things that we most heavily recruit, I would say, in this uh, in this first season. Um, tight end, we could use a second one behind Max Wisner. He's pretty good. He's decent. Not going to be probably the biggest focus, but 
you know, the room is not, the room's not going to look good, guys, on any of these positions. Left tackle is a huge need. Got a couple seniors who aren't really that good anyways. Josh Blanch, or we got, I guess, a senior and a sophomore and then another senior. But we got Josh Blanchard and Delvin Morris. Not a lot to write home about there. Left guards, okay, I guess. Probably wouldn't be my biggest focus. Uh, center, huge need. We only have one, and he's not very good. <laughs> Tyler Williams. So gotta get some, some depth behind him. Right guards, actually not in the worst position here with junior, redshirted junior, Dane, Dane Shore, and then also Keelan Davis. So right guard, probably won't look at that too much. Uh, right tackle, you know, again, it's it's okay. We got three soft, four sophomores, all sophomores, two of them redshirted, but not very high on the good old overall scale. <laughs> Left end, we need one. We got a decent player here in Bennett Adler, but he's a senior, so he'll be gone next season and nothing really behind him. Uh, right, right in two decent players, I would say, but they're also seniors as well. CJ Nunnally and La Joshua Jackson. The defensive line gonna have to be pretty big priority. Um, yeah, definitely because defensive tackle not very good across the board. Uh, left outside linebacker terrible, absolute dog trash. Our highest rated, we have three freshmen. Our highest rated overall <laughs> is J uh, Jason Hocker. He's a 57 overall. So not going to be getting a lot of QB pressures, I wouldn't imagine, here in this first season of Akron Ziff's dynasty. Middle linebackers, we got a senior. He's he's okay, but he's gone after next season, so he's a he's a need. Antavius Fish, he's a senior, but not going to be around too much longer. Um, right outside linebacker, I guess we're we're good for now. A senior and a junior, decent decently, and when I say decently rated overall too. This is, Ak I mean, decent by Akron Zip standard. Like most of our starters, if you go look at the Buckeyes roster or, you know, Clemson's roster, Georgia's roster, those are third and fourth string guys. Like our starters are third and fourth string guys on the big schools. So when I say decently rated overall, I'm talking about decent for us. Uh, cornerback, arguably maybe our best, uh, best player behind or maybe even better than Alex Adams, the wide receiver is Darian Lewis, actually from Akron, too. So the hometown hero. He's a junior. He's got a couple more years. We got uh, Devontae Golden Nelson, redshirted junior. So a couple, all these guys are redshirted juniors. So they'll be around probably. And that's the other thing, too. The one thing that's, I guess, if you want to say, is in our favor. Not a lot of uh, guys on the Akron Zips probably going to be going pro, you know? So there's not going to be probably too many guys that decide to go out their, you know, their sophomore year or their junior year, like they're probably going to be on this team for four years, most of them. So we, you know, we can keep these guys, build them up a little bit and hopefully with some good recruiting. I don't expect much in this season, but maybe we can start to turn it around in season number two. So Mr. Dudley Saxton here, he is a recruiter and I'm going to go ahead and just, we got five coach points, might as well spend them now, you know, spend them if you got them. And I think probably going to go advanced look at wide receivers and tight ends will probably that or offensive line but i feel like we need to get you know some diamonds in the rough when it comes to the recruitment and really got to get a playmaker or two obviously we probably have to look at quarterback in the in the future as well but right now our quarterback he is what it is and with that being said we're gonna go ahead and just set up our prospect list now i was uber confused at this when i first started but I've been playing all day today, practicing all day today. So, you know, I, I think like I think I pretty much got it. And what I like to do, a school like Akron U, we're not gonna be able to get, if any, too many five-star prospects, too many four-star prospects. And honestly, I don't really wanna waste the talent on it, you know, or I should say the, uh, the recruiting hours. So we'll take a couple. If there's even, there's only gonna be a few that are even interested in us. J and we probably it's gonna be very very tough to get these guys at all so we'll throw a couple of them on the board here like gerard rawlings for example defensive tackle our defensive tackle room is not very good so we can throw him on there for now i saw a couple yeah there's only literally three five-star recruits that would even consider us <laughs> at all and it'll probably be near impossible to get them so i guess we'll go ahead and throw uh where's this quarterback here nate Nate Toyana, Toyana huh? from Hawaii. We'll throw him on there as well. And we'll do kind of the same thing with the four-star prospects. Again, 
not expecting too many of these guys to be interested in us, if any. So if there are any, like for example, there's two cornerbacks here, don't really necessarily need cornerback, but if we can get a great player, might as well get him, right? So we got Dennis Cormier here. He's from Oxford, Michigan, um, six foot, 200 pounds, a slot guy. And then we also have Duke Homer, who is from Fresno, six foot two zone guy. Um, we'll put Cormier on here. He's 33rd ranked in the nation. And then also I saw, yeah, halfback. That's a need. As you can see, it's highlighting in need. We have uh, Matt, Matt Skowski, I'm going to call him, from Tennessee. 5'11 power back. We'll throw him on the board too. And not going to put too many of these guys on here, but just curious to see if anybody else is even interested. There's a receiver, Pierre Huval from Cartersville, Georgia. He's a route runner. Definitely, definitely need receiver. And not going to put the middle linebacker on there because, you know, most of the guys are probably going to have to be two, three star recruits, at least, you know, to start. Um, we got defensive end there, it looks like. Right tackle is a need. We'll throw Kennedy on there. And you can see up there at the top, we have 35 targets. So right now we're at six. I don't want to waste too many. And also, too, if anybody had any initial interest, you would see that on here. And there's like no interest really. Okay, here's one though. Tight end. Where are he's a four-star recruit? And we're already the sec his second interested team. Don't really necessarily need tight end the most but it's worth it to put on there. Bobby Babineau, we're already his second interested team. So maybe I'll take that uh, that other right tackle that I was looking at off the board. That's probably the best thing to do, if I'm being honest, is look for guys who already have some initial interest in the Akron Zips. So I went ahead and just filtered it by interest. And right now we're looking at the wide receivers. And as you can see, I mean, and look, you don't have to look at guys who already have initial interest in your school, but I think being the Akron Zips and it's not like you know the sexiest school the most flashy school that people are looking to go to it's probably smart at least here in season number one to look at guys who already at least have some sort of interest in being on your team so I filtered it by top 10 and we got to look here at all the players who have some sort of interest like this guy for example Jacquez Bowie he's only a one-star recruit but he's we're already the second school that he's interested in so like you know we got to fill a roster regardless right we got a three-star recruit here brian redmond from cincinnati he's a he's a junior college guy and we're already the fifth interested team he's a five nine route runner so we'll probably throw him on the board as well got a four-star recruit that we're the seventh seventh team that he's interested in that would be kevin teague hollywood florida we'll throw him on the board as well and probably just do one more wide receiver for now and we'll probably make it somebody who maybe this two-star guy, Chris Jewell here from Westchester. He's 5'8", though. Kind of want like a tall guy. Here's uh, Chauncey Uzama. He's a two-star recruit. We're his sixth interested team. He's 6'3", 186 physical. We'll throw him on the board, too. Yeah. Offensive tackle. Going to be a really big need for us. We got Bobby Bagan Babineau. We talked about him earlier as well a couple uh one-star guys that have decent interest not a lot of interest really across the board i mean here's a ooh, here's a six foot five 315 pound pass protector from danville illinois nick navs Naj najvar we'll call him najvar we're on his in his top 10 at least so we'll go ahead and throw him in there um there's a four-star recruit tavita skura where the six interested team that he has he's six six three twenty so really good size and probably would be smart to put a one or two star recruit in there because again like so this guy dalton duke and maybe some of these guys like they show one one star two star but they could be diamonds in the rough you know and we're probably not going to land a lot of the guys that we necessarily want to so we're going to have to probably play it safe and of course we could change the board up as players get commit to other schools or lock us out sometimes they'll lock you out so we could commit, you know, change the board around as players commit. We'll throw a, let's get one more offensive tackle here. This guy, two-star recruit, 6'6", 321, Emmanuel Gent. We'll throw this Gent on our board right now. Ooh, and here's a three-star center, Daniel Keenan, who's, we're already the third school on his board. We need a center very, very badly. So we'll definitely put him on there. He's actually the only center as of right now that has uh, any sort of interest. He's 6'4", 303. 
So really good size. And I suppose we'll probably put, we need one more center, probably make it a, uh, probably a two score. Is that Ricky Stromberg? What? No, oh, Rashad, Rashad Stromberg. I saw R Stromberg. I thought it was Ricky Stromberg. He was our center uh, for a while on Sentinels franchise, but we'll probably throw maybe a two-star guy in here. Uh, Rashawn Simmonson sounds like a good idea to me. And see, this is why I went ahead and did like the five and the four-star recruits first and just put a couple of those guys on my board because I know we're probably not going to get them. And now I can kind of start to fill up like the two-star, three-star guys. So linebacker, huge need. We suck at linebacker. So Vernon Rambo here, we're the fourth interested school. He's oh, also from yeah. Akron, Ohio, too. So another hometown kid. He's a six foot, 251 pound power rusher. We will uh, go ahead and put him on the board. Shaq, these, some of these names, man. <laughs> some of these names are pretty difficult to pronounce. Shaq Kalmalot. I don't know. He's a second interested in school, but not really sure that he is the right move. Maybe a three star guy. He's. Pass coverage, uh, Rayshon Osborne, Osborne is pass coverage as well. I kind of want like a speed rusher, power rusher guy. Um, Norman McHugh, he's a run stopper. Okay, we'll add him to the board and probably put somebody else who has interest. So this guy, yeah, we'll do Kamalot. We're the second interested team for him. And maybe he should do one more linebacker just because we really like, we oh. stink at linebacker. And maybe maybe a four-star guy. Put a four-star recruit on there. We got Malachi Garbutt. <laughs> okay. It's a pretty cool name. And also Jaden Kindred. One's a one's a pass coverage guy. One's a power rusher guy. So let's add uh Ma old Malachi here. 6'1, 255 from Georgia. We'll go ahead and add him to the board. Free safety, another really huge need. And we have Deontay Isaac from Barberton, aka Barber Tucky, Ohio, which is actually the, I was born in the Barberton Hospital. Most of you guys are probably like, what the heck is Barberton? Don't even know what it is. So I was actually born in the Barberton Hospital, left the Barberton Hospital, and then went to my home in Akron. And let me tell you what, football prospects do not come out of Barberton. So this, this guy may be a bust. I don't know. But we're going to put him on the board. He's a three-star guy, Deontay Jackson. And there's only a couple, again, that are really interested in us. So probably one of these two-star guys like Steven Reeves. He's from Avon, 6'1", 188. Uh, tendency is zone. We got Oliver Sims here, 5'9", 184 from Bowie, Maryland. He's a one-star recruit, but we're already in his top five. So that would be good. So maybe, or maybe Sammy Osgood, we're in his top eight. I'm going to do Oliver Sims because we still got to do scouting, right? So these guys... These guys could be terrible, just like just like their ratings imply, or maybe they're going to be good. I don't know. And we actually are going to need a punter, too, because we have two seniors, and they're not very good either. So we'll throw a couple punters on the board. We'll do a three-star here, and we'll also do a one-star as well. And here's somebody who we're already the top interested school on his board. Why? Why, Ronell? Why? Why do you want to come to Akron? There's not much here. I can promise you that, but we'd be happy to have you. And there's also a four-star quarterback, Akeem Bullocks, who were already close to his top five. So, you know, like I said, quarterback, not really a huge need for us at this time. But you want to start thinking about bringing guys in. And we got we got three more targets we could put on here. So let's go ahead and I don't think I did any guards. So we got a right guard here, Joey Storm. We're the fourth interested school. Let me go back to the four-star prospects. Uh, or maybe we'll stick with three-star. We're not going to get too many four-star prospects. I don't think. Is anybody in the three-star? I mean, there's got to be tons of guys with interest, you would think. Neil Hook looks like he could be a good middle linebacker. Four-star out of West Virginia. Not too far from Ohio, so we'll throw him on the board and got one more. I'm going to make it a uh, a four-star guy just because you never know. One of these guys, maybe we can sway him a little bit to come over, right? So we'll put a uh, receiver here, Darren Trinidad, and that'll be 35 out of 35 targets. So you can see... That's everybody on our board. And if we get a look at our school here, I mean, there's not a lot to write home about. We already got somebody at risk of transferring, but he's a 49 rated overall player. So, you know, whatever. But D minus championship contender, D plus program tradition, D minus brand exposure. Like the main thing we're good at is coach stability. And that's because we just brought in a guy. So like we're, he's not going to get fired Dudley Saxton in his first season. They got to give the guy a chance. But aside from that, 
we don't have a whole heck of a lot to offer. And there's our first bust looking at quarterbacks here, Ron L. Cutler. I scouted him 100% and we got to be extra, extra mindful of these 500 hours because uh, they are going to they're going to go quick. So, you know, uh, Ron L. Cutler here. I mean, he's only a two star recruit. They say he's a bust, but really 85 throw power, 80 short accuracy, 75 medium accuracy. I mean, what do you really expect? Uh, we're the top right now, at least the top school on his board. We'll offer him a scholarship for now. That could be subject to change. And uh, oops, pressed the wrong button there. Let's get a look at Akeem Bullocks. We're not going to scout the quarterbacks too much. Um, that gave us 40%. And with him, we are we are number six. So he's not ungettable. Um, so we're going to offer him a scholarship too. Probably won't offer the big five-star guy a scholarship yet. Not really any sense in doing that. Um, but, you know, we'll take a look at his scouting at least a little bit. He's probably going to be a beast. Yeah, 85 short accuracy, 77 medium, 84 pressure, 80 speed. So that's definitely going to be somebody who's probably going to be good. But can we get him, though? I'm thinking probably not. Show me something good for one star Tyler Nunez. Could he be a gem? He's not a gem. He's got 85 speed, 87 Excel, 76 ball carrier vision. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll offer him a scholarship. Why not? Again, you got to fill roster spots. And this guy, Matt Skowski, Skowski, we'll call him. Let's get him. He's going to be a good one, but he's a four star. And we are, we are in his, no, we're not in his top 10. We're not in anything. He's got 87 carrying, 85 trucking, 93 speed, 90 acceleration. We'll offer him a scholarship as well. I mean, really, like, you could really offer anybody a scholarship because, like, if they commit somewhere else, they don't come to your school, it's going to go right back. Like, you see, we have 35 scholarships to offer, but doesn't mean it's 30 total. So, uh, Pierre Huval, he's got 79 medium route, 70 deep route, 90 acceleration, 90 speed. He's a four-star guy, though. Let's look at somebody who uh, already has interest. So, Brian Redmond's a three-star. Kevin Teague, he's a four-star, and he's gettable. We're at number seven right now, and, you know, Miami's up there, Florida State's up there, but there's no big-name schools going after Kevin Teague. So let's take a look, see if we can get him, and he is a gem. So maybe this is a situation where, like, if it comes down to it, we could take Huval off of our board, and Kevin Teague looks to be better and also probably more gettable as well. Now, we can't do anything like searching the socials, sending the house, none of that until the next week, but he's somebody that tight race we're seventh already on his board he's a four-star guy hidden gem if we can convince him to come to akron U, he could be a difference maker you can see we're already at 285 out of 500 hours so the hours do go quick you don't want to waste them you want to you know if there's somebody who you think is going to be good and you're, they're gettable they're in a gettable spot you want to focus more on that so daniel keenan for example he's a center we need a center we only have one and we're already the third most interested school on his board. So we're going to go ahead and scout him 100%, see how good he is. They say he's a bust, but we got a whole freaking team full of busts. So you know what? That's fine. You could be a bust and you can thrive at Akron University. So we'll go ahead and offer him a scholarship. Also want to make sure we look at linebackers as well. So who was interested? Vernon Rambo. Also, we got, yeah, we got Malachi Garbutt, but we're not even in his top as of right now so let's look at vernon rambo he's a two star two star guy go ahead and scout him i like to just go ahead and get him scouted 100 percent, but he's taken forever on his so that's not very good they say he's a power rusher and he's got 71 power moves 73 strength doesn't look really that great 80 acceleration we need linebacker really really bad though so we'll go ahead and offer him a scholarship and Let's also take a look at this Malachi Garbutt gentleman here. It's going to take a long time to get him up to. I probably shouldn't wait, waste a lot of my uh, hours. So we'll offer him a scholarship. I mean, don't think that he's really going to be one that's too, uh, too gettable for us. You know, free safety. We need bad. So Deontay Isaac, the barber tucky guy. Let's see how good he really is. Honestly, like if I'm being honest, bringing guys into Akron, you I probably don't even have to scout him. Like, they're probably going to be better than what we're already working with. But it's still good to know, especially if you got a couple guys that you're kind of on the fence about. But uh, Deontay here, 89 speed, 86 agility. Definitely going to offer him a scholarship for, for sure. And you see now we're down to 115 hours. So this is where I'm not going to scout the punters. Like, either they sign with us or they don't. 
Um, but let's see. So let's just look at the entire team here. See uh, what the best best way to go would be. 115 hours. We got to really be wise. Like so, Gerard Rawlings, uh, number 26 ranked player in the nation. Yeah, he's great. But do I waste my 115 hours for this week on him? Do we even have a shot on him? That's the question. It's it's one of those things. Like uh, it's one of those things. Now, Tyrique, we'll say Tyreek, Tyreke Benedict. We are the second most interested school on his board, and he is a four star recruit so and he's also a gem too even though we don't necessarily need tight end this guy has to come to our program because he's good and he already has interest same with bobby babino here second interested school on his board he's a four-star guy 121st ranked player in the nation we're gonna go ahead and fully scout him see what he's looking like they say he's a bust but he, he's not gonna be a bust for us i can promise you that and that's gonna take us down to 55 hours so got a really Really be careful with who we scout. We have a, let's go to, let's look at receivers. Was there any receivers? Okay, I've offered three of them, so I guess we're good there. Um, there was somebody else I saw who also had pretty good interest in us, who looked pretty good as well. We have a right tackle, Nick Najvar, three-star guy. And we are the ninth interested school. So this is one where maybe I would want to know. Like, I would want to know how good he really is. He's a hidden gem. So he is going to get a scholarship for sure. And now we only have 20 hours. So really, you know, you might, you got to use them, right? You definitely got to use them. Um, it's going to be more so the next week is going to be more important because that's when you're going to determine, you know, do you DM the player? Do you send the house? Eventually you can schedule visits, things like that. But right now this is our board. We got all 35, only got five hours. So I guess we can offer, let's offer a scholarship to the uh, top ranked player on our board. He's not going to take it, but we had five coach points anyways, so why the heck not? And week to week, players will narrow down their searches, and we see Ronell Cutler, who was that quarterback. He's already reached his top eight schools, and we're number two. Now, do we actually be aggressive on him? I don't know, because we got our quarterback. He probably, you wouldn't think, right, be as good as the two quarterbacks that we have, but we also got, like, that other guy, a couple other guys that are four-star recruits that we're looking at, And but this is the week right here. That really, really matters. So we're back to our 400 hours. But now we can start actually doing things with some of these players. So this is where it's really, really important. You want to look at. So we'll start with Tyreek Benedict here. Now, we're the top rated school for him. So we want to make sure that we not going to do anything with him, like sending the house as of right now. But you still want to allocate some points to something. I, I do think we should try to get this guy. We really should. So Got to be mindful of the hours that you use. You got your, your player specific hours over there. That's the 25 out of 50. So anytime you search social media, DM, et cetera, et cetera, it's going to take away from that. But then you got your hours at the top that is total for the whole entire team. So uh, with a guy like this, he's really good. We're the top ranked team. We don't want to lose any of that traction. We'll do, you know, contact friends and family and we'll search them on social media too. Why the heck not? Same with uh, right tackle Bobby Babineau. I know they say he's a bust. He's not a bust for us. And if we look at his board right now, we are not. So we're very close. Uh, but the, the light blue is total interest that we've gained. And the dark blue is what we just gained from what we did last week. So since we're kind of in the race there, we don't want to fall behind. We'll also, for someone like this guy, we need offensive line. We will, let's contact friends and family. That seems like a good idea. Let's also DM him. And then we'll also search his social media. So we used 40 hours as opposed to sending the house, which would be 50, but that saves us 10 hours. And we're still gonna get some good, good movement for doing those three things. And you can see here, players will lock you out. So it's not even the start of the season yet. And Chauncey Uzama already said, nah, bro, I'm not going to Akron. You got me all the way messed up. But someone like this, so Peter Huval, who is a four-star recruit, looks very, very good. Actually, no, it was uh, Kevin Teague, right? This is the guy I was talking about. So we really, really want to make sure he's got decent interest in our program. We're the second on his board behind Miami. He's good. He's a four-star. I'm not messing around with this brother right here. We're sending the house. We're gonna. We're just gonna show up at his doorstep with the whole, uh, the whole entourage, and Ooh. pretty much make him an offer that he can't refuse because we need wide receiver. He's a good one. Somehow he wants to come to Akron. How? I do not have any idea as of that, 
But, you know, so then Peter Pierre Huval here, we can probably at some point, yeah, so Uzama, take him off of our board right now. There's no point at all. And honestly, probably Huval too. There's no point in having him on here because we're going balls to the wall for Kevin. He's a four-star guy. We don't need the other, other four-star guy taking up a spot on our board. And I'm also going to look at Brian Redman here too. Now, he's not as good, obviously, three-star recruit. If we look at his scouting, he, uh, well, come on, go over there. Yeah, I mean, nothing crazy, but, you know, we're going to need roster spots. We're the second uh, interested school. Tight race there with number one, actually, Ohio State. How is he more, how is he more interested? Okay, so this is a great example right here. So see number three, Ohio State. The dark red bar is bigger than the dark blue bar of Akron, but because of what we did last week, the dark, dark part of that bar is exceeding Ohio State's bar. I said bar a lot of times. I know I got bars for days, but this is somebody that we should probably, I mean, look, if uh, if Ohio State's, I think I also saw Michigan State in there too. If they're interested in him, right, there must be something to that. Now, probably not going to send the house for him. We'll contact friends and family because, again, you can see our hours going way down up there. So that's why you really got to make sure you know who you want. We'll allocate 30 hours to him. Hopefully, by next week, that can get some movement and we could be number one on Brian's school board. Center Daniel Keelan, what's it with the... Okay, so we've got three Ohio teams that this guy's interested from. I mean, he is from Cincinnati. So you got us, Ohio State, and the Bearcats. And for some reason, and not yet, right? This could change week to week, and I'm sure it will. But as of right now, Ohio State and Cincinnati and those guys, they're not pumping any hours into looking at Daniel. And I think that we probably should because we need a center bad. And I almost am tempted to send the house at him just because he's the only center that's interested in us. But that's where it's like, do you send the house on a player that the game considers a bust? I don't know. We can always change it later on. But for now, let's just go ahead and uh, we will just we'll contact his friends and family. Leave it at that and see what type of motion that does going into the next week looking at linebackers now linebackers Garbutt did not have any interest here's a guy who's not that great two star but there's really no need to do anything as of right now because we are just so far ahead of the pack on his influence so we'll leave him alone for now Shaq call calm a lot that's gonna these names are messing with me man Shaq calm a lot not gonna put anything into him as of right now either um, but this is where you also could see Somebody like Malachi Garbutt, you know, do we do we just go ahead and throw the house at him and see if that even gets us into into his top eight or anything? I think we will, if nothing else, for scientific purposes, you know, we'll want to see um, next week if he decides to you know, or if that makes any any better movement, I should say. It'll be curious to see if that happens. And we'll also take a look at Isaac here from Barberton, where the number one team on his board and it would probably be wise to at least do something right just to keep that initial interest so we'll just dm the player slide up in his dms we can also take uh, this guy oliver sims here off the board we're locked out so no need to occupy a space now here's one where we can and you don't have to only do just the you know the uh the dms the stuff like that you can scout someone further week to week too so here's one that's a one-star recruit we need wide receiver right now we're really going hard for one of them but we are the third interested school that he has. So I would like to scout him all the way. And this is also where putting that uh, five five coach points into the receiver recruiting thing, you can see it gets it all the way up to 60%. So I was hoping for maybe like a hidden gem. He doesn't really look that good. I mean, he's fast, kind of. We'll offer him a scholarship just to say that we did it. But at least as of right now, I mean, we got uh, Kent State going hard for him too. So there's really no need to do that we already looked at brian uh let's see right tackle okay we should probably do something for this guy nick najvar because we're the fourth interested team he's a three-star recruit we took a look at him he looked pretty decent um and we need tackle so honestly i'm debating if we sent the house we would probably jump the other teams but that would also get you know take away a lot of our points we're going to do it only for the simple fact that we need offensive line really, really bad. And maybe should have done it. And actually, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it. Yeah. So you can take it off. You can take things off. So we'll go ahead and uh, yeah, please take that off. And rather than looking at Najvar, 
We got a player here, Tavita Skura, who's better. Don't even really need to scout him any further to know that. So we'll send the house at him instead because that makes a lot more sense to do. And then as far as Najvar here, maybe we'll just go ahead and DM him, search him on social media maybe too. It's not going to use too many points. I mean, it's good to have multiple because, you know, if Skura signs somewhere or uh, commits somewhere else, I'm going to be saying signs a lot, you know, <laughs> but if he commits somewhere else, you know, we're going to have to fall back on Najvar. So we don't want to leave him alone altogether. Let's look at Calm a lot. We're going to scout him a little bit further here. This is going to take probably a lot of our points or hours, unfortunately, but we need linebacker. Yeah, see, it's it's taken like 10 at a time. Um, we'll offer him a scholarship because right now we are the second uh, highest school on his board. And if we use the last 20 hours here to uh, we'll actually we'll use 10 to DM the player. And then there could be one more person that we can also try to DM as well, maybe just to just to get the conversation starters going. We'll do a uh, halfback Nunez here. We did. Did we offer him a scholarship? We did. So we will DM him as well. And uh, so next and as the weeks go on, more players are going to fall off. And of course, you can go back and add some people to your board, too. And the hours will reset. And as you progress through the season, you'll be constantly adding people, removing people, getting your hours back, stuff like that. And now you see here a lot of players locked us out, but a lot of players were in their top. So like Shaq Kalmalot, we're in his top. Tyler Nunez, we're in his top. Uh, we're top one. This tight end, Benedict, we really, really want to get him. Wide receiver Teague, we're second. So you can see, and look, I didn't, <laughs> this is a, this is a dynasty series. Not, not to, this is not a tutorial on how to, uh, how to, how to scout and how to recruit. But recruiting, to me at least, is going to be probably one of the most fun things about this game. And that's the big, you know, selling point, I feel like, for a lot. So, you know, we won't go. And obviously, as the as the episodes go and the and the Dynasty series progresses, we're not we're only going to be doing week to week. Right now, there's a couple weeks leading up to our first game. So there's and we're setting up our initial board. Right. So a lot of stuff happening. But there will be tons of gameplay and stuff. Don't you know, this is only episode one guys so this is not going to be a recruiting series but hey the recruiting is fun as hell and it's really how how we're going to be able to turn around a sorry school like akron u into a potential contender and how about that first game of the season we take on the number two ranked team in the country ohio state should probably ought to look at i want to see our schedule can we see our schedule and if so i'm sure we can but yeah there we go okay so team schedule Hopefully it should be a lot easier. Yeah, okay. So we take on Ohio State, number two ranked team in the country, and then we do not play another ranked team for the entirety of the season. So the schedule makers just told us to, uh, it's a TV game too. Wow. So imagine if we go down to the shoe and beat Ohio State on national television. A guy can dream, right? It's probably not going to happen. So I don't, we're going to play this game too. Um, Got to look at some more recruiting first. And first game jitters, Coach Dudley Saxon says early mistakes are expected, but the coaching staff is confident in the team ahead of this week's opener. I'm not confident. I love the confidence, Dudley, but we're taking on one of the best of the best. So I don't know what to expect there. That one could definitely be a bloodbath, but we want to go ahead and look at our board again. So we are starting with quarterback. So this is where things get a little bit rocky. So Akeem Bullock's. We are the second, you know, best team on his board, but look at all the influence he just got from Tennessee. That may be one that we just decide to throw the towel in on, you know, because we we got a quarterback as it is. I added a couple other players as well because some other players locked us out. So, like, for example, uh, okay, so let's look at Redmond. We're the top on his board. That's good. And we're still kind of with Kevin Teague here. He's one of the one of the main ones that I want. We can't schedule a visit yet so we'll keep it and we can't do once they narrow it down to like the top i think is it top three i want to say then we can okay top five so once he reaches his top five schools then we can go in there with the silver tongue try to sway him a little bit but just in case he says no we should probably take a look at trevor matlock here um now we're already using 80 hours so again don't really need to, at least in this particular situation. I'm not saying you would never need to scout people because absolutely you would. 
but we don't really need to get too aggressive on our scouting because our team sucks. I mean, like I said, like most of these people are going to be good fits for us. Now, I do want to look at, okay, Tyreek. I'm not sure if it's Tyreek A or Tyreek, but we are in really good position to nab him unless Ohio State starts sending some people at him. Um, so we should probably... I'm, I'm not confident that they won't. So let's also DM the player as well. And if it comes down to it, you know, maybe we can uh, send the house or something like that. Our four-star guy, though, Tavita Skura, we're well in the lead for him. So that's really good to see. And also Babino as well. So the right tackles, Babino. I mean, we're way, way ahead on Babino. So we're looking good. So in a situation like this, you know, if we were kind of on the fence or, you know, in the fray with some other teams for these tackles, maybe I would start allocating some points to like Dalton Duke or Emmanuel Gent. But until I see it, you know, until I see us fall out of the race or until I see us, the race get a little bit closer, there's no need to really do that. Um, now, guard, though, we got a couple that we're looking at here. We are the six rated, six interested team here for Chester Dalton. And with him being... I'm actually, no, I'm actually not going to scout, I'm, I'm not going to scout, not going to scout him yet anyways, I'm confident he's better than what we got, and again, this may not be the best way to do it, you guys, if there's a better way that you find, that you, that, that works for you, by all means, please let me know, but I think it's better to use my points, I don't have enough hours to do this, I don't, oh, duh, that means I got 10 out of 400, yeah, what am I talking about, so, this is where you might want to go in and do some cleanup work, right? So maybe some guys that you're putting points into that you might not need to, you take it out, take them out and see, is that the case with anybody? I mean, maybe we take 30 out of Brian Redmond because we're looking at, at these two guys, but we're first on his board. So probably actually not, maybe shouldn't have sent, you know what? Probably going to take, send the house off of Trevor Matlock, at least for now. Uh, because the, and this is a great example because this is where you really gotta gotta watch these hours and really make them count. So this is where a guy like Malachi Garba, you can see we're sending the house at him, but UNC, even with us sending the house, UNC is just really really far ahead of the pack. So I think you know we take out send the house, and then there was a really good defensive end that I added to our board here. That would be Brian Dwyer, who really we're really tight tight neck in the race for that one. So again, rather than scouting, there's not much not much need to do that. We'll offer him a scholarship and then we will also send the house at him. So maybe that can get us. Looks like we're competing with some, some big name schools there like Ohio State. But that's where taking those hours away and reallocating them to other players really, really comes in handy. All right, get the Vaseline stock up on the Tylenol and the Advil. Make sure you do some prayer and meditation because we're going down to the shoe to take on the number two ranked team in the country. Not sure how much of this game I'll show. I mean, I want to show it all. Hopefully it's a close game, but at least this way, you know, if we get our, get our arses whooped in this one, we know we don't play any more ranked teams for the whole entire rest of the season. So, Without further ado, guys, if you are fired up for this series and you want to see more College Football 25, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. At 1,000 subscribers, I will do an NFL jersey giveaway, and we are very, very close, so please help me get there. And without further ado, let's get on down to the war zone and get this bloodbath over with. Welcome to Columbus, Ohio, and the venerable horseshoe, home of the Ohio State Buckeyes, a place that's home to such legendary names as Archie, Woody, Zeke, and Stroud. Today, an in-state clash between two teams from the state of Ohio, and here, football is important, and beating an in-state rival carries a little more weight. As we'll see a squad from the back, the Akron Zips, taking on the second-ranked team in the land, the Ohio State Buckeyes. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, can't wait to get this one started. And we are going to kick off to the Buckeyes first, so let the slaughterhouse begin. I mean, who knows? Maybe we, uh, <laughs> how about that? What would that do for Coach Dudley Saxton and this Akron Zips organization as we get a look at him right there on the screen? What would that do for him if we could somehow come in here and surprise these guys? I'll tell you what. I'm not going to set any lofty goals or anything like that. How about we just don't get blown out by 30? 
we could just not get blown out by 30, I would be happy. It's going to be a run to start here from uh, Trayvon Henderson, the senior, backup running back, and we're able to limit him to a short game, which is nice. And I do like how it constantly shows you rating or uh, stats and stuff like that on the top of the screen there. I feel like in Madden, you kind of have to go in and look and see how players are doing or really just be aware of, of watching that ticker at the top. And uh, we got the Buckeyes already to a third down, which is pretty awesome. They're coming out guns, so I say, hey, let's come out nickel blitz, and we'll go ahead and audible to an overload, or we'll come out zone and audible to an overload blitz. Let's see if we can get maybe McCoy in the backfield. I think we stopped him fourth and inches. So the Buckeyes will punt. Three straight handoffs by Will Howard, and it amounts to nothing. We have our uh, receiver Bobby Golden back there ready to field this punt and that's a pretty good start i would say and we're gonna actually take this maybe should have just fair caught it but hey gotta do what you gotta do and we get a look at our impact players there two good ones darian lewis the corner and alex adams the receiver who we're really really gonna need today boy this stadium is loud and it is shaking man let's go ahead and uh motion our tight end over i do see somebody on press no i'm not gonna do that let's just go with the running play. Oh, nice broken tackle there. Okay, from Charles Kellum, our sophomore halfback. And he's actually able to pick up a first down. The passing game, though, that's the question. What will the passing game look like? I can't. And this is the thing, like, full momentum out of the gate for the Buckeyes. I can't see my routes. I don't know what's going on. So it's not going to be the best time. Let's just go safe underneath pass there. Not going to do anything crazy. Picking up a gain of five. Boy, I got to really remember what these buttons are because my routes are all sorts of messed up here. I know it's a mesh with uh, Bobby Golden and the tight end Wisner. That much I do know. And we're going to go to Wisner and Wisner actually has space out front. Okay. So first and 10, we get the ball down to close to Ohio State's territory. Not how I thought this game was going to necessarily start, but hey, I will definitely take it. You do not hear me arguing now i'm looking on the screen here it's my first you know i did play a little bit on stream last night okay i was looking for where we were at on the field we're at the 47 couldn't find that at first come on give me a good block okay we're off to the races trying to juke a man but picking up a gain of eight though ben finley gonna try to limit his workload as much as possible by getting our running backs involved looks like charles kellum gonna be the go-to guy at least in this one and needs oh needed to cut up field just a little bit better. That's going to make it third and inches. So if we put a double team on this guy right here, I'm confident that uh, Williams here, uh, Marquez Williams, can pick up the one yard that he needs. Oh, yeah, baby. And more, too. All right. So Akron Zips getting it into Ohio State's territory. Got to score, though, on this drive because uh, I'm... I'm not I'm not confident that this is what we're going to see for the rest of the ball game. I'm really not, and especially since I can't see my routes either. That really may make life tough. So uh, let's just go to our tight end again. And wow. oh, look at that, our tight end, man. He's got some speed. That's Max Wisner, one of the best players on this roster, I would say, easily, because the roster is not very good. And I just I'm I'm elated with the start of this one here. I really am. Uh, make sure I didn't hold on. I got to make sure it's still on the all American difficulty that I didn't accidentally change that. Yeah. Okay. Still on all American. I did not touch the sliders at all whatsoever. So hopefully this is just, and you know what? I almost want to just streak one of my receivers, golden or Adams, but I'm not gonna, uh, right now. I just want to come away with some points and not do anything dumb. Let's go screen pass here, but we're going to flip it. We got Marquez Williams, the freshman back on the field and I want to run away to uh, the far side of the field here so hopefully we can dial him up on the screen which we did and look at the juke oh man fighting forward getting it to third and inches and we are potentially threatening to score a touchdown and we're also wasting a lot of this first quarter too which I like let me guys uh, let, let me know in the comments if you guys want me to change you know, I got it on eight minute quarter. Oh God, no, I should have cut it on the inside. We should take the points, I imagine. But coach is saying go for it as well, actually. One yard to go, inside zone. Confident we could pick it up. Got an ID up the mic here and just focus in. We got Charles Kellum back. Only need one yard, so let's freaking get it. Kellum, bang, there we go. 
And pushing the pile forward as well. That, and then you see the wear and tear there. So Kellum's starting to get beat up a little bit. So that may be where we spell in Jordan Simmons. I don't know why he's he's not out there. And Williams has a snowflake next to his body. Does that mean he's cold? Ice cold? I don't know. But let's uh, switch the mic assignment here. Got to snap this ball. And we are going to snap it. This could be a tutty. Okay. Akron Zips put up the first points of the game. You got to like the fight and you got to like the intensity. Will that last for the rest of the game, though? Probably not, but you never know. And I also suck at these new kicks. So even extra points, I got to be quiet. Okay, that one should be good. Yeah, I was I was missing kicks bad. Bad on stream, man, with the new kicking system. It is certainly much different. But let me know if you guys want me to change. You know, I got eight-minute quarters, accelerated clock. If you feel like the game's going too fast or too slow, we can always, on my Madden series, I do 10-minute quarters. So maybe we'll bump it up. It did seem like that first quarter did go kind of fast. But maybe that's just because we were moving the ball and, you know, there wasn't a lot of... Uh, a lot of clock stoppage going on there. And yeah, like I said, I suck at these kicks. So all bets are off. You may be seeing me go for a lot of fourth downs just for the simple fact that... Oh, a fumble on the play. Did we recover it? We did not, I don't think. No, we did not. All right, so got a little bit of confidence, though, if nothing else. And now the stadium's kind of quieted down a little bit. The routes aren't uh, all squiggly. And they really... Ooh, nice move there, though by Quinshawn Junkins, one of the best halfbacks in the business. And now we're seeing the Buckeyes go to go a little hurry up here. So gotta be cognizant of that. And I suck at, suck at hurry up situations in Madden. So probably gonna suck at them in college as well. It's Judkins again, I missed a tackle. See, I think that first drive was maybe just a one-off situation or maybe not though. Maybe we can keep this uh, streak going. Let's see if we can get Lewis in the backfield. By his With some pressure oh there we go baby that was a great great play indeed from shaman cooper the senior linebacker and we were talking about linebackers a lot in the recruiting part of this we need them but if cooper keeps making plays like that maybe he can uh secure that linebacker room for us a little bit Let's true it up a little bit oh and trying to go for a pick there will howard threaded the needle picked up eight i'm gonna come out zone here but we're audible and into pressure and i don't like the fact that nobody nobody is on uh cornell tate out there it's gonna be a keeper oh had a chance to get howard but we were just a uh, short and curly away from stopping him will howard does pick up the first down so far uh will howard is two for two on this drive we went four for four though with ben finley on our drive so kind of out dueling the buckeyes but they are getting close Two scoring range. So got to tighten up here. It's third and two. I came out zone. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Although, oh man. Had a chance to stop Trayvon Henderson there. But he kept the pile pushing forward. Tell you what though. This game is a lot faster. Uh, with Madden, I usually have a chance to catch my breath if I need to. After the plays. But man, this one just. When the play is over in this game, I'm noticing they just. They shoot you right into the next one. And I def yeah, with 3.30 to go, I think I'm definitely going to go to, we'll keep the accelerated clock on and just go to 10-minute quarters because I feel like it's going a little bit too fast for my liking. Um, but, you know, right now, all we care about is getting the victory. And that's going to be a sack from big number 91, the senior CJ Nunnally. And are they in field goal range? They are in field goal range. Two tackles for loss, two for Nunnally, and a sack. But field goals are always, always harder in college football. So Jaden Fielding, the junior, we'll see if he is going to boot it through. And he does. But if you would have told me that we would hold the Ohio State Buckeyes to three points in the first half, half's not over, I realize. I'll tell you to put the pipe down. So far, that is what has happened. Two-minute warning. Uh, we're kind of moving on this drive, guys. I'm a little, little surprised. So let's uh, go screen pass here and... Just try to keep try to keep the tempo. We don't want to try to play hero ball. So far, we're interception free, and I want to keep it that way. Wow. Almost almost wasn't sack free there as we almost got sacked, and the pressure was coming in uh, hot and heavy from the Buckeyes. God, I wish Alex Adams was getting pressed, but maybe it's a good thing he's not. I don't need that devil 
on my shoulder, and that is okay. The tight end, man, that's Jake Newell. So getting all of our tight ends involved, and really, like, the clock is not even really a factor right now. I don't want to go draw play. We're going to come out gun, though, and I'll probably audible it. Yeah, audible to inside zone. It's a big one. We really want to pick this one up, so come on. Wait, what did I do? No, I pressed the wrong... I could have swore I audibled it to, to inside zone. And we can't, oh my God, dude. I swear I audibled it to inside zone. Apparently I did not. And what a wasted, wasted opportunity there. That is terrible. And oh man, see that red? I'm not a good kicker. That's gonna take me a while to learn this kick system. Maybe a fumble. Yeah, that's a missed opportunity, though, to say the least. And I guess, I mean, obviously, it's it's my fault. That's obviously a use to error. I get it. But I, I swear, like, I knew what I was doing. I, I know how to call audibles. I've done it, you know, in Madden for, for many years. Throwaway, though, by Will Howard. Okay. Going to keep the intensity up with a little bit of pressure. Going to also use her up on Jester. It's going to be a run. No, it's not. It's going to be a play fake. Uh-oh. 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 That could be it. Come on, tackle him. No. <laughs> oh, no. That was, uh, wow. That was not a good play. That was a Mecca Abuka. One of the best wide receivers in the business. And it was only a matter of time before a big play like that happened. And it's all my fault because we had a chance to... Even if we didn't score, at least take the whole clock away. And that is a touchdown by Cornell Tate. So the Buckeyes take the lead. We get the ball after halftime, which is nice. But I am just kicking myself, beating myself up over that last one. Got a minute to potentially get into field goal range. Can we do it, though? That's the question. And I'll tell you what, it would be a whole heck of a lot easier if I could see the plays I was calling. Because uh, this stadium, momentum, whatever you want to call it, it definitely makes life difficult. Let's just go to the tight end, which has been the common theme of this game. Okay, tried to get out of bounds with Max Wisner. Going to go ahead and call a timeout there. But Wisner, he has been the man, the myth, and the legend today. He has been doing it and doing it at a high level. Going to go screen game. Really just trying to get into field goal range. And if we can not get sacked on this one and uh, get the ball to Williams over there. My hell oh, pressures. Oh, my God, dude. Wow. You would think that Joey Bosa and Nick Bosa were coming into the backfield on that one. So maybe the eight-minute quarters are, are okay because now I feel like the second half is kind of going the way that it should. And, again, I can't freaking see my plays, man. The one thing I will say is they've been leaving underneath routes open all freaking game. I also got to try to utilize the hurry-up game and stuff like that. I'm still getting used to this one, so take me – Take me a while. Oh, almost got sacked again. And we may be in field goal range. We're not in my field goal range. No, no way. No how. I mean, I would definitely, like, I would try it, of course. But <laughs> I need a screen to work. I, a screen would be lovely on this one. So maybe, guys, if we want to, uh, to, to block, right, that would be lovely. And the screen pass. There we go. There we go. That's a little better. Nice juke, too. And we're going to not call a timeout. Yes, we are. Can't audible Adams either, man. I'm trying to put Adams on a curl. And it's not working because of the momentum. So that sucks. And, uh, oh, come on. Running back open. Please. That's a pick. What? No. What happened there? Oh, my God. I'm blaming the running back, man. Oh, come on. Somebody please get to him. Oh, my God. I think that was Jordan Simmons. I'm blaming him. I'm blaming him because he was open and the ball, I think, was accurate. No, it wasn't. Uh, it was it was Charles Kellum. But he just like, I mean, maybe we threw it too soon. And I mean, I mean, that is just OK. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. OK, I have to send this to uh, to my guy, Ryan Moody. He's going to love it. He's going to love it because there's no it bounced off his chest. Bounced off his chest, off his knee, and then he caught it for a pick. I mean, come on, EA. Yeah, that was a little sus, man. I don't know. I'm going to try to clip that and send it to Ryan Moody. If you guys ever watch Ryan Moody videos, he will have a freaking cow, and they're about to score again. Yep. Okay. 
So this game looked promising at first. I mean, it's only 17-7 still, but it's just got a lot uglier. And with 10 seconds to go, get me into the locker room and get me to the second half. Yeah, the shoe is going wild now, and I'm just happy that we scored. And for a while there, we were actually outplaying the Buckeyes. But look at Emeka Abuka. He's got two catches now for 86 receiving yards and a touchdown. And we, unless we come out and – but look, so that pick was, was BS. I'm, just, I'm saying that's total BS, total animation-based football. That was BS. But – that one, that one drive by me where I thought I audibled it, that could have been the difference maker right there. And game's not over. We're still going to fight. But unless we go down here and score, it's not looking pretty. I feel like what worked most in the first half was when we got that ground game established. So that's probably what I'll at least look to do uh, to start. Let's see if we can send over Wisner, the tight end. I see that press. I do see that press. But with already throwing an interception, I'm really not in the business of testing it too much. And I guess our offensive line isn't in the business of blocking either. And the coach is suggesting actually a screen, which I know that seems crazy, but like I don't feel too confident in anything else going up against this Ohio State team. So as long as we get some blocking, that's the big thing. And of course, we're not gonna... Our offensive line is just getting torn to freaking shreds. The blowout could be in full effect here unless we really buckle down and play some good defense. So maybe uh, we'll see if he gives it to Trayvon Henderson. He is not. It's going to be a keeper. Need a fumble really, really bad. A fumble from Will Howard would actually literally be incredible. Um, probably not going to happen, though. I don't. I wouldn't imagine, but you never know. And we're going to send a little bit of pressure at him. It's going to be another keeper. And that time we are right there to get him. That is big number 33. Don't even know who that is. It's Bennett Adler. Okay, yeah, he's he's one of our good ones too. And this is a good situation here. We're going to guess pass. We're going to shade inside. We're playing zone coverage, which maybe I shouldn't have done. So we're going to have Cooper drop out here and be an extra defender. And the pass is right on the money. Ameka Abuka continues his tear. I will say, though, we're, we're playing better than I thought. I mean, I really thought like 17-7 and we're getting them in tough third downs. And with the exception of a couple boneheaded plays by me, our defense is playing decent. I really thought this was going to be a route. And that's a nice, nice open field tackle there because uh, the running back, Trayvon Henderson, could have been out. Let's go 4-3 contain here. We got fish guard in the middle of the field. And now they got Quinshawn Judkins in there. So got to be cognizant of that. It's going to be a quick RPO. And oh, man, dude. Ooh, big hit there on Emeka Abuka. Wow, that was a huge one by Devontae Golden Nelson, the junior. Emeka Abuka is really starting to make his presence felt in this one here, which is never a good thing. And Will Howard is also playing pretty well in his own right. And that could spell disaster. Got to get the tackle there on Jeremiah. We did, but looking like the Buckeyes are going to unfortunately probably punch this one in. That's okay, though. The way that we played in this game makes me feel confident that we're, when we're not playing the number two ranked team in the country, we could actually do good. You know, we look, we have no, no business even being competitive in this one. So the fact that there was even a sliver that that could happen earlier on, that works for me. And the game's not even technically over yet. Oh, look at that pitch. RPO pitch. I got to figure out how to do it. I know how to do it, but I got to get used to doing that. We're going pressure again. It's the only thing that I feel like if we can get a sack on Will Howard, maybe that will do something for us. But nope, it's just going to be wide open there. In the middle of the field is Jeremiah. And yeah. All right. Might be cutting to the uh, fourth quarter in this one, guys. I'm also not a huge fan of this Akron Zips playbook. It's like, it's all shotgun. How about an RPO? Maybe an RPO can jumpstart us. I mean, broken tackle there. Okay. I like to see that. That's Faison Wilson. That's one of our better plays of the game, I would say. And the game is technically not over yet. I mean, it would definitely be, you know, a long shot to say the least. But Faison Wilson makes a good catch on the RPO. And you got to like to see that. This is also pretty good. Uh, I like the coverage here. It's conducive to a run, which we are going to try to do with Marquez Williams. Give me some good lead blocks, please, guys. Gain of five. I'll take it, I guess. You know what? Screw it. 
We haven't targeted Alex Adams yet. I'm probably, unless that, I mean, if that safety comes down, which he actually did, but no. We're just going to go safe underneath. That's the only thing that really has been working for us is, like, safe underneath plays up the middle, things like that. The running game at times has also worked pretty well for us, too. Um, and we're playing a good team. Like, they got stars all across the board. Star DBs, star defenders, maybe a run up the gut. That didn't have that cutback working the way that I really wanted it to. Maybe uh, put Charles Kellum here on a wheel. That might be a good thing. And also might have Adams underneath as well, which oh, I shouldn't have thrown that. That's a pick, isn't it? Yep, sure is. Wow. Second pick of the game. And they're going to also score pick six. That pick was a little bit more realistic than the first one from Cody Simon. But yeah, that's a uh, yeah, night, night time. He knows what's up. I mean, it's Akron Zips against Ohio State Buckeyes. What do you guys want from me? Got a chance to get him off the field here. We're into the fourth quarter, 31-7. So it's, you know, it's not, it's not good by any means. And we're going to hold him to a field goal, though. So my goal is just let's see if we can score a touchdown in these last five minutes. That's all I want. I don't ask for much, you know. I didn't ask for a win. I said we probably weren't going to get the win. I knew that to be true. Jaden Fielding makes it through the uprights. But all I'm asking, make the scoreboard a little bit more respectable. I would be happy with putting up 14 points against the Buckeyes. I just really don't like this playbook, man. I want to keep rocking with, uh, you know, the Akron U playbook because I want to keep it realistic. But I'm just really not a fan of it at all. And let's just go ahead and give it to uh, what in the world are you doing, Marquez Williams? That was pretty much the same as what happened earlier. It's like he wasn't uh, wasn't expecting the route or something like that. And can we finally, finally get this screen game working? It hasn't worked all freaking game. This time, trying to juke. Needed a better block there by Colin Lyons because it wasn't really there. All right, I need Kellum to block. We're coming out. And also, too, I need Newell to block. So I'm going to really try to get uh, Adams or somebody on one of these slants. That is... The goal here, and I think with a good throw. Did he hang on to that? Faison Wilson, don't get injured. Did he catch it, though? No, he freaking dropped it, dude. And, I mean, we got to go for it, but that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why the talent is just not here for this Buckeyes team. So, And we just lost our, our second best, probably, wide receiver. So, there you go. Uh, who wants to get open? Someone's open there. It was a bad pass. And uh, that's going to do it here, guys, from the shoot. That looks about like what uh, what the real score would look like if Akron was taking on Ohio State. 37-7, to we scored in that first quarter and did not score for the rest of the game. But you know what? That is okay. Will Howard had three touchdowns. We had two picks. But that is okay because, again, only ranked team we play all season. So we can lose this game and go on and win the all the rest of the games in the season. Is that going to happen? No, it is not. But it's all right. There was zero expectations in this one, so I'm fine with the outcome. I'm just really kind of happy to get this one out of the way, if I'm being totally honest. So if we look at the uh, stats here, can we see both? You can't see both at the same time? Come on, now even Madden has that. So Ben Finley, 172, two interceptions. That was not very good at all. Will Howard did pretty well. I wish you could... Why can't you see both teams? That is dumb. We never really... I mean, I guess a combination of Henderson and Judkins got about 70 yards. And uh, our running backs, I mean, Marquise Williams averaged five yards per carry, small sample size. But he also had a couple of those boneheaded plays as well. And this was just so hard to get anything going through the air. I, I do not like this Akron U playbook. I might have to change it. We'll try another game with it, you know, next episode. But uh, at least Max Wisner... Played pretty well. Faison Wilson left the game due to injury. And Emeka Abuka just carved us up. Yeah, four for 111. And also Jeremiah Smith did. We had some good uh, some good defensive plays, though. A couple sacks. Take a look at that. Do they show? Oh, wait, what? Hold on a second. Why, why is it showing me? I'm on defensive. Why is it showing me receiving stats? Okay, there we go. That was a little weird. But uh, sack from CJ Nunnally. That was good. Sack from Bennett, Bennett Adler, Adler. And then TFLs, we had three from Shimon Cooper, two for Antavius Fish, two for CJ Nunnally as well, two for Ben Adler, one for Damon David, and one from Brian McCoy. So some things to build on. All right, so we take on Rutgers in the next episode. Hopefully that's a winnable game. We did get 10 coaching points, which is nice. Dudley Saxon improved to level two. 
And next episode, we are going to dive more into the recruiting, see if some players committed, and hopefully win our first game of College Football 25. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.